Hello and welcome to another episode here on my channel. My name is Kevin Small and today we want to take a look at the article for Lost Ark, which is called Bringing Lost Ark to the West. This is apparently Amazon who is telling us a little bit about what they have planned, how they want to work with the community and how they want to handle the game in general. By the way, if you're wondering who I'm talking to sometimes, I'm also live streaming this right now. So I'm talking to my community in chat. Not that you are thinking like I'm crazy and I'm talking to myself the whole time. <laughs> um, no, that is not what we are doing here. I'm talking to myself all the time off stream, but definitely not on stream. That's the difference. And let's have a look at bringing Lost Ark to the West. I love this picture. Future heroes of Arkesia, we are excited to reveal that Lost Ark is finally coming to the West. We are working with the developers at Smilegate RPG to faithfully bring you this beloved game while preserving the developers' original vision and this unique take on the MMORPG genre. We hope players enjoy this beautiful, vast and thrilling game as much as we do. Lost Ark is an enormous game. For context, it has over 3 million words, over 16,000 lines of dialogue, and over 1,500 NPC, and it is quite the undertaking to localize. The game has been in development for 8 years, was released in Korea in December of 2018, and is currently live in Korea, Russia, and Japan. Bringing Lost Ark to the West is more than just localizing the 16,000 lines of dialogue, and we know many of you might have questions about this version of the game will be like. Today, we will share a bit about our approach to localization, our plans to create a player-focused business model, and our plans to update Lost Ark with new content over time. Damn, that's a lot of information here. Let's see how much they are really showcasing, um, because unfortunately, like the first letters are always a little bit abstract, uh, which is reasonable. Don't get me wrong, this is not me complaining. Um, this is what a lot of developers and publishers doing. Like they, when they bring a game to a new player base, they want to see their reactions. They want to see how do they like those changes? Are those changes what the community wants? Or were we completely wrong here and we have to change it, right? So that they are a little bit abstract now and then is something I can see, but let's see what they have to say. Our approach. Lost Ark is a stunning and feature-rich game developed by Smilegate RPG that blends the massively multiplayer online game and action role-play game genres with game modes and systems not typically found in Western MMORPGs. For example, sailing, homesteading, affinity systems, harvesting, and crafting and much more so yeah this is kind of curious and i think i want to jump in here um when you are level 30 in the game you're getting your own ship and your own crew and you can upgrade your ship you can upgrade your crew you can get new ships you have to prepare your ship to get into a certain region and this is where the game really opens up like when you play the game till level 30 it feels very much like this oh yeah yeah, I have, I have seen this before. I've done this before. This is your typical MMO action RPG game where you're running from A to B, do the, do the quest, kill 10, 10 enemies, bring me six tales of that. And there is like a, a light story going on in the background. And then, as I said, with level 30, the game is like, oh, you thought that's the game? Yeah, no, that is actually just a tutorial. Uh, let me show you the real game. And then you were getting this this ship and the world map is just opening up with hundreds of islands and continents to explore. And the game is then becoming a real MMO. Homesteading. Um, yeah, they implemented um, player islands, I think, with Season 2. This is something really interesting. I hope they're actually addressing this in this letter where they are talking about which version of the game we are getting. 
because most regions have started with version 1.x and Korea is right now at 2.x and all the other regions are also now at 2.x but they have all started at 1.x and what I've seen so far from the game what I heard so far from the game is that we are getting 2.x but different so I'm, I'm, I'm still curious I hope they're addressing it affinity system if you don't know what that is it's pretty simple it's well <laughs> you can build up affection to NPCs like you can flirt with them so to speak and then they can give you special items special quests something like that so it's a bit of like a sims component if you always wanted to get your MMO waifu um, that's a chance Harvesting and crafting, now you might say, well, that is not rare for Western MMO. No, but how they do it is, because it is actually kind of different. But we can go into that detail into an extra video. We are partnering with Spygate RPG to adjust areas of the game to better meet player expectation in Europe and North America, maintaining Spygate's original version for this award-winning game is extremely important. Our intention is to provide the authentic Lost Ark experience for all our players and all of our localization efforts being conducted through the lens of preserving the spirit of the original game. Makes sense. Uh, as somebody who has played Lost Ark already for over 100 hours, there are a lot of references which are very much focused around Far East um, literature, lit literature, literature, well, that word, there's a tongue twister for English as a second language, yay, um, but there, there are a lot of references, I'm not sure every person here in the West will understand, so maybe they are, they are switching it up and changing it up. Um, I wonder also if they are actually changing some of the game regions. Like the second continent you are visiting after the tutorial is like a huge Asia continent. And it's all Asia. Like everything they are doing there is completely Asia. And I hope they are not changing that. Like it's actually really cool when you are coming, in, coming to this um, Asian village. Or Asian city. Like I, I just hope they preserve that. Yeah. Oh, Lost Ark's business model. Now I'm curious. We understand the business model is a primary concern for players in the West. Wow, they are opening with that. That, that that's good. That's good because. Yeah, Lost Ark is an amazing game, but unfortunately, <laughs> the item shop in that game, especially in uh, in Russia even, is outrageous, to say the least. In all regions, Lost Ark is a free-to-play game with optional in-game purchases. <sighs> sure, let's call them optional. We want to assure players that the Western version of Lost Ark will be fair, fun, and a great gaming experience where in-game purchases are completely optional. Well, I hope so. We think it is important that players have a path to acquire all items in our version of Lost Ark without having to make a purchase with a few exceptions. For example, founder packs, services like name change, okay, like probably like mount skins and something like that. I, I could live with that. But let's be real here to just give you an understanding what is possible in the item shop of Lost Ark, uh, let's say in the Russian version. One of the most important things you can buy there is the feathers, like Phoenix Down in Final Fantasy, where you can just revive yourself with the feathers. And yeah, you can acquire them in game, but they are rare, like really, really rare. And you can just buy those feathers 
for real money in the in-game shop and it allows you to revive yourself in a fight. And yes, that works in dungeons. And yes, that works at raid bosses. So if you actually really want to compete later on in the game and you die at some point, which happens, uh, you want to revive yourself. You don't want to restart the whole fight. You don't want to restart the whole dungeon. You want to revive yourself. So you need those feathers. And for the people who are basically spending that money, they are ahead. So, yeah, I, I really, really hope they are keeping that up. And uh, you can actually buy everything. The one problem I have um, is they're saying that players have a path to acquire all the items. I hope this is not a thing where it takes you days and weeks till you get like a phoenix feather from the item shop because then it's it's still like you have to buy it so i hope i hope they are not doing that we are still working through the details with smilegate and we will share more details later this summer along with our prime prime gaming benefits oh of course they are connecting it with uh, amazon prime i mean that was to be expected it's an Amazon Games uh, game. I don't like it, but sure. We will see what this will entail. And I know that some people will not be happy about this. And they will point out that, hey, like, can you not go a little bit more into details? I think they don't want to because they want to see what the community has to say. And hello, Dragotai, good to see you. Um, I think they they want to see first what the community has to say and what they can figure out with Smilegate. So this is probably a process where the community will make it very clear what they like and what they don't like. And I hope they are putting their foot down. I will. Because I said this before, there is another game which I believed is one of the best MMOs out there and that is Black Desert Online. Unfortunately, Black Desert Online is a completely shit show because of the item shop. I stopped playing that game because I looked at the item shop and I was like, oh, oh, you know, oh, that, that item shop killed the game for me. So I hope they're not like doing the same mistake here at this game. Content Cadence. As we mentioned above, Lost Ark launched in 2018, which means there's a ton of polished content that will keep you immersed for a long time. In fact, in our closed technical alpha test, which starts today at 12 p.m. PST, players will choose from 14 classes. I think we have 80? 20 now in South Korea? I think we have 20 now in South Korea. Sail the Sea of Guinea, 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 Brave the Abyss Dungeon, Ancient Alveria, and so much more. So they are starting with less classes, and it also seems like the classes they are starting with are very different to what you would normally expect. Like, I can, I can show you this very quickly if we are on this. Um, like, you see the warrior here. And apparently they are starting with the Berserker, the Paladin, and the Gunlancer. This is not how all the other regions started. There's actually the Destroyer is missing. Like, he is swinging a huge hammer. I don't know what they are calling it, uh, because it seems like that they are actually changing the names a little bit. But the Paladin was actually one of the classes which came relatively late into the game. He was one of the last classes before Season 2 actually started. So they are already starting out with that. Or the martial artist, there is the... Um, oh, I don't know what they are called. Like the a lance fighter is missing. But, and this makes this interesting, the gunslinger is in here. What is the gunslinger? Uh, the Gunslinger 
is basically the female version of the dead eye. So what they're doing here is something similar they're doing with Black Desert, where they're bringing in the same classes again, but just as a female or male version, and it plays a little bit different. And the Gunslinger is actually one of the newest classes they just implemented uh, a few weeks ago in South Korea. So it's like, whoa, okay. So we are starting very, very differently. And then the Scouter is also missing. The Scouter is missing. Uh, the same goes with the Mage. We have only two Mage classes so far. Which is like, whoa, okay. And then they have the Assassin in, which is also like one of the new classes which came in relatively late in the game. So they're definitely going for a different approach when it comes to the classes and the game we see. Like a lot of people have been summarizing like at which version we are starting for Lost Ark. But it seems like Amazon Game Studio will have their own version, which is fascinating. Uh, we will have plenty of existing content to reveal leading up to the launch and look forward to sharing more in the coming weeks. But needless to say, we are looking forward to regular content updates featuring classes, continents, dungeons, and more after the game has launched. Yeah, so it seems like they will have a completely different version than um, the Eastern release of Lost Ark had, which I'm very curious about. Yep. Addressing expectations. Oh, this is interesting. While Lost Ark has millions of active players around the world, there may be some content in the game that is unexpected for some Western audiences. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <clears throat> A lot of skins sometimes, yeah. Sometimes this can include cultural references, imagery, or new <laughs> love imagery, tentacles, lots of tentacles, or nuances that are unfamiliar to us. While our goal is to preserve the authenticity of the original game, we also feel localization updates can be made to make the game feel more approachable and representative of our Western players. We want players to enjoy and embrace all of the interesting features and quirks that make Lost Ark unique and wonderful. Lost Ark is a massive fantasy world with a lot to localize and we have been hard at work for quite some time. Our approach is additive and extends well beyond our localization efforts. We are happy to report that in-game text and voiceover will be available in English, French, German and Spanish. I love me some Spanish. We are also actively working on changes that we believe will make our audience feel more at home in Lost Ark. Some areas of focus have been character creation. Yeah. Knowing all players of all types want a character they feel represents them, as are much more options for default costumes, hairstyles, and skin tones. Additionally, we are working to increase NPC diversity throughout the world of Arkesia. Hey, Sakura, good to see you. Yeah, what they're basically pointing out here, if you are playing Lost Ark, let's say in um, in any of the other regions right now, a lot of... Uh, um, white people and a lot of Asians. But not really a lot of people of color and different regions in like Europe or even in like America and so on and so forth. Like the diversity in the game is low in the Asian version, <laughs> which makes kind of sense from where the game is coming from, right? It's a South Korean game. It's produced in South Korea. So, of course, they are focusing more on um, more Asian-looking people than instead of, like, focusing on what we have here when it comes to diversity in the West, which is totally expected. And that's fine. And 
Actually, I can show you a screenshot uh, just a few seconds ago where they are showing a little bit more of the diversity here. Uh, we've been working closely with Smilegate to make changes that reflect our audience. This effort will be ongoing and we work closely with our community to identify areas we can improve. You hear that, folks? Don't just cancel the game. Tell the developers what you want to see in your game and they will probably make it happen. And please remember, the game is mature rated and therefore not for everyone. Yeah, lots of lots of boobs and uh, naked men and uh, naked women and yeah, lots of tentacles. Have I mentioned tentacles? Tentacles, lots of them. Embarking on the Odyssey. We hope this helped share some insight into who we are bringing such a massive and unique game to the West. We believe it is a delicate balance between preserving the spirit of the original while making needed adjustments to meet the expectation of our players. We look forward to sharing more with you in the near future. Our immediate focus is our closed technical alpha test, which you can sign up right here. You won't see all of the things things that we mentioned above in our alpha build, but rest assured, we are working on them for launch. The technical alpha test is primarily to test our new infrastructure, the server configurations with the game client that Smilegate wants to expect some hiccups, but this is what the technical alphas, what technical alphas are there for, right? Following the alpha test, we will have a beta test later this summer to prepare for our full launch. Stay tuned for the exact dates. We are very excited to bring this beloved and highly anticipated game to players in the West and look forward to exploring Arkesia with all of you. Cool. This looks, this sounds good. I know people are like, no, they didn't really go too much into detail for a lot of things. Calm down. I know what you mean. And I'm normally somebody who is pointing that out very quickly when a developer is trying to, you know, evade certain points. But here's the kicker. As I have already said, they want to probably see how the community reacts to the changes they're doing and to the changes they plan. Like... It doesn't really help them if they're planning all the changes and it takes them months or maybe even years to implement them. And then they are pushing it out to the players and the player base is like, yo, what the heck is this? What What, what is this shit? I didn't want this. Right? That's not what they want. They want to listen to the player base and they want to make sure that they get it right. And by the way, to show you an example of uh, diversity, this is the official, um, the official header, basically for Lost Ark. And you can see right here, right? You have people of color here. And I can tell you already, this, eh, eh, right there, this, is so not possible in the in the eastern version of the game like i've played with the character creation and funny enough i think i created a kind of similar character with the similar class ha huh. um but not like this not like this so again they are trying to push the diversity here which is good, like everyone, especially in an MMO or in an RPG, right? You want to represent yourself and you want to make sure that there is a character which looks like you want that character to look like. So listening to the community, making the adjustments if needed, great choice. But with that said, that was it from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you might consider to leave a like on your way out. And if you are also new to the channel, you want to see more Lost Ark content, 
I would also appreciate if you might consider to subscribe to the channel. And more importantly, I'm actually curious. Tell me what you want to see in the Lost Ark localization here in the West. I'm, I'm kind of curious to uh, pick your brain and see uh, what you want. But with that said, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Stay safe. Bye-bye.